How to sew the sling bag with Amber Makes. This beautiful curve bag is available in a choice of prints and sits neatly under your arm with an adjustable shoulder strap and it has a matching curvy purse too. Cutting out. Cut around the outer edge of all the pieces on the printed fabric panel. If you open it out, give it a press first and you'll see that all the pieces are printed and labelled. The seam allowances are included in all the pieces so all you have to do is cut around the outer printed line of each piece. Then cut out the label and pin it to the top of the right side of each piece and then you'll remember which piece is which and which is the top edge. You'll also have some lining fabric in your kit that you'll need to use to cut the lining fabric. Two zips, one for the bag and one for the purse, as well as two oval rings and a slide buckle that are used for the bag. Once you've cut out all the fabric pieces and labelled them, you can see I've got them here. There's the bag front outer and the bag back outer. There's the bag gusset outer and the bag strap. All the bag end outers, there's four of those. And then you've got the purse front outer and back outer as well as the purse zip tab. Now take your lining fabric and give it a press to remove any creases and lay it out flat on your cutting surface. Now you're going to use some of the pieces that you've cut from the panel as templates to cut out the lining fabric. Because the pieces are all symmetrical, you can place them right sides up onto the right side or you can place them right sides together. It doesn't really matter because they're all symmetrical. So lay out the fabric and place the pieces. There's plenty of lining fabric, but place them reasonably close together so that you don't waste any. And you will need to pin on the back front out and back outer to make the lining pieces. Make sure that they're straight with the print or the stripe of the fabric. Then pin on the purse front lining, back lining and the four back end pieces to cut out the lining. Pin them into place and cut round them. You'll also need to cut the back gusset lining. The measurements for this are included in the instructions as well as the pocket outer and the pocket lining. Again, measurements are included. So here's all the lining pieces together. You can label these if you like, or just pin them to the outer pieces so you remember which is which. There's the purse lining pieces. And all the outer pieces, the bag end outer pieces. Here's the piece that I've cut for the, the gusset. There's two pieces for this. And again, the measurements for this are in the instructions and then the pocket outer and the pocket lining. You can label these if you want, or just try and remember which is which. Making the pocket. Take the pocket outer and the pocket lining and place them right sides facing, matching all the raw edges. Now pin them together along the top edge. We're going to make a slip pocket for this, for the sling bag that has a dividing line in it so you can keep extra items inside. So pin it together across the top and then sew it together across the top. Once that's done, press the seam open and flat like I've already done here and then refold the outer and the lining so that they're now wrong sides facing and press it so that the seam lays right at the top. If you roll it between your fingers, it will be at the top and then top stitch along the top edge to hold the lining and the outer together. Once that's done, take the bag front lining and fold it in half and with your fingers, just make a crease down the centre. This is just so that we can find the centre and open it out again so it's right sides up. Now take the pocket and to find the centre of this, fold it in half and again, crease down the centre to find that centre crease and then open it out and place it right sides up. Now measure one and a quarter inches down from the top of that crease down the centre and make a mark with a pin or a pen. So one and a quarter of an inches down from the top. Now take your pocket and place that on top, match up the crease, the centre creases so that it's on that one and a quarter inch mark. To be sure it's straight, 
if you make sure that the crease at the bottom of the pocket and the bag front lining match up by just rolling them up, you'll know that your pocket is now straight across the sling bag lining and also one and a quarter of an inches down from the top. So just pin it into place. Now turn it all over because we're going to tack it into place from the wrong side. So just pin it into place because you've positioned it centrally and straight already. You know that it's not going to move. So pin it into place all the way around. This is the easiest way to add a slip pocket to a curved edge rather than having curved shapes is to sew it and then we trim it. And you just get a neat finish that way. Tack it into place all the way around the edge of the lining within the seam allowance. Once that's done, it will look like this. And then cut the pocket so it's level with the raw edge of the bag front lining. Make sure you tack within the seam allowance because then these stitches won't be seen in outside the seam later. You can tack by hand or machine. I prefer to tack by machine using a longer stitch length just because it's quicker. So once it's trimmed, your pocket is now the same size as the lining. Now to put a dividing line in, you need to sew down that centre crease. On some fabrics, this isn't as easy to see while you're sewing. So I'm just going to mark mine with a pen just so I can see it properly while I'm sewing. So just mark down that central line and then sew it into place. To make this seam extra strong, start stitching at the bottom, stitch up to the top and back down to the bottom again and it'll be nice and secure and you now have your slip pocket complete. Inserting the zip. Place the bag front outer, right sides up, and fold it in half to find and mark the centre of the top curved edge and the centre of the bottom curved edge. I'm going to mark these lightly in pencil within the seam allowance, just so because I'll be needing these marks later, and it just keeps them in place. Now take the long bag zip, fold it in half, because you need to find the centre of the zip tape. So we just fold it in half carefully, and then just pop a pin in the centre just in the tape. Now place the zip right sides down on top of the bag front outer and match the centre mark on the bag front outer with that pin that you've placed in the centre of the zip. And this just makes sure that the zip is placed centrally. So pin it together at the centre and then pin it together all the way along, making sure that the edge of the zip tape matches up with the raw edge of the fabric. The zip is longer than is needed, so don't worry about that. We'll be trimming that later, but at the moment, just pin it into place and don't worry that the zip extends a little bit beyond the edge. So don't stretch it to fit, just make sure it fits along the edge. Pin it all the way to the end. And then pin it the other, from the other side, from the centre to the other end, just through the zip tape and into the lining. But do make sure as you're doing it, it's really important that the edge of the zip tape matches up exactly with the raw edge of the fabric. This just means you'll get a nice neat zip and it will be the same width and look even when you've finished your bag. Now tack it into place within the seam allowance all the way along. I've done this by machine using a longer stitch, but you can see it's within the seam allowance. Now take the bag front lining and place it right sides down on top. Match up the straight edges, because obviously the zip extends beyond, and pin it together at one end. and then pin it into place all the way along. Now you'll see that the outer and the lining are right sides facing. Again, make sure you match up the edges because you've got those straight edges at the end of the outer lining. They need to match up. So the zip is going to be sandwiched between the outer and the lining. As you're pinning the lining into place, make sure the raw edge matches up exactly with the edge of the zip tape. Again, this will give you a neater finish. So I'm placing my pins vertically here because it's a curved edge. You can get more pins in if you place them vertically and you can also ease the fabric round the tape because of the curve. Now sew this into place with a zip foot using your quarter of an inch seam allowance. And when it's done, it will look like this. So open it up so that the lining and the outer are wrong sides facing. Mark the centre 
of the zip. You can see where this is by the centre marks on the outer and the lining. Now take the bag back outer and again I've marked the centre points in pencil on the wrong side and place the zip, the other side of the zip, right sides facing with the right side of the bag back outer. Match up those centre marks, so the centre mark of the pin with the centre of the bag back outer and pin it into place there. I'm just going to remove that centre pin so I don't sew over it later. Now match up the end. It's important that those straight edges that are on the edge of the bag match up. So matching up the front line, front outer and the back outer. So make sure those straight edges are matching up and pin the zip into place at the end. Then you can pin between the end and the centre. By mark matching the centre and the ends first, you can make sure that the front outer and the back outer are sewn to the zip in exactly the same position. So do make sure you match up these outer marks before you pin between. Now the same thing at the other end. Match up those straight edges and then making sure the zip tape is level with the raw edge of the back outer. Just pop a pin in there and then you can pin between. Again, I'm going to put vertical pins here just because of the curved edge. The more pins you put in, the neater the finish will be because you can make sure that the raw edge of the fabric and the zip tape will match up. Now, just like you did before, tack it together within the seam allowance all the way along. And once that's done, it will look like this. Now take the bag back lining and I've marked the centre points already at the top and the bottom. You'll need those bottom ones later. And match up the centre points. You can see the centre point on the back outer. Match that up to the centre point on the back lining by just pushing a pin through. And then pin it together here. Now pin it together at the end. Again, make sure you can see how I'm doing this, that I'm making sure that those side edges match up so that the back outer and the back lining match up exactly and then pin between because when you're dealing with curves like this if you don't get the ends matching up then they can sometimes go off if you just pin all the way along so again make sure that those straight edges match up you can see that the back outer and the back lining are matching up pin it together at that end and then pin together between Now, once you've pinned it, sew the three layers together using your zip foot and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once that's done, open it all up so the outers are right sides, uh, the outer and the lining is wrong side facing. And then press it so that the seam lays exactly on the edge. Because of the curve, you'll need to pull this out to do this, but it will lay on the edge, but you just need to give it a good press. And once that's done, top stitch either side through the outer and the lining and the zip, and this holds the lining neatly inside. And it will look like this. You've got that nice top stitched edge. Work that nice and slowly, but it'll give you a nice, neat edge that's at the top of your bag. So now the outer and the lining are joined together and the zip is neatly inserted between them. Adding the bag end outers. Take one of the bag end outers, you can remove the label and fold it in half just to find the centres. So you can see I'm folding it in half lengthways, just mark a crease and you need to find the centres. I'm going to mark these on the top and the bottom of the wrong side just using pencil so that they don't come off. Now take the bag end outer and lining that you've assembled, so you've got the bag outer and the bag lining, and place that bag end out at the bottom long end centrally on top of the zip so that the raw edges of the fabric meet up with the raw edges of the bag end outer. So you can see the zip teeth are centrally on that mark and the raw edges of the bag outer line up with the bag end outer. And then pin it into place just on the zip. Make sure it's lying straight. If you pin it to the front and back outer, that helps to keep it lying straight. Now tack this into place, but only across the tape and the teeth. Don't go into the fabric, just the tape and the teeth. 
and it will look like this. So you can see that it's not stitched to the bag front and back outers, it's just stitched to the tape and the teeth. Now take the lining, the bag end lining, and place that on the other side. So if you fold it out, turn it over, place it right sides facing, make sure that the ends of the bag end out and the bag end lining meet up. So it needs to be central. You can mark the central of this bag end lining if you like, or just match it up. And again, pin it into place so that it's level with the raw edges of the bag front lining and bag back lining. Now pit, sew together through all the layers, but only across the tape and the teeth. So you're sewing through the bag end outer and the bag end lining and the zip. Now it will look like this. So it's all sewn together, but the edges of the bag end out of the bag end lining are hanging loose. Now, to attach the bag end outer to the bag outer, you need to just stitch it through the outer fabric. So pin it into place on one side and pin it into place on the other side. Make sure that the lining, so the bag front lining, the back bag lining is out of the way. This is important because this helps you to get your really nice, neat lining later. That we, we're doing this fiddly little thing. Now stitch it together from one side to the edge of the zip tape and then from the other side to the edge of the zip tape. It doesn't matter if the stitches don't meet up exactly the first seam. It's just sort of attaching it that's important. So you can see that I haven't sewn the outer to the lining and that bag end outer is just sewn into place. Now repeat that with the bag end lining. So pin it to just the lining fabric, making sure those top raw edges match up. You can see the bag end lining extends a quarter of an inch beyond the edge of the front and the back, but that's because of the seam allowance. And when you sew this into place, it'll actually sew straight across. So make sure you keep the outers folded out of the way, start stitching on one side, stop at the zip tape, and then stitch from the zip tape to the other side. When you put it on your machine, just fold the outers out of the way and then it will look like this. So now the bag end outer and the bag end lining is attached to the outers and the lining, but you haven't sewn the linings and the outers together. It's only the zip where it's all sewn together. Now fold them this way so the seam allowances are running towards the short end, so away from the bag and give it a press. Now you need to repeat this at the other end. But it's easier if you tack the zip across the zip teeth to just hold them together. So just outside that little metal or plastic end, tack the zip teeth together. It's just easier to sew it, but do it outside the end. Move the zip out of the way a little bit. And now you need to repeat this to sew the bag end outer and the bag end lining to the other side in exactly the same way, making sure that you don't sew the outers and the linings together at any point. And it will look like this now. So you can see you don't even need to trim the end of the zip. That can just stay inside the bag end outers and it'll keep it nice and secure. Put the zip slide in the middle and this section is now complete. Making the gusset outer. Take the bag gusset outer and on one short end, fold it in half to get right sides together. So you're folding it in half lengthways and mark that centre point just by creasing it with your finger. Now take your tape measure and measure half an inch in from that crease, so towards the raw edges, so half an inch in, and mark that with a pencil or a pen. Now pin the two layers together at that mark. And now we're going to make it into a pleat by opening it out, and then you need to push this section flat to make a pleat. If you find it a little stiff, I find that if you just put something like a little pair of scissors inside, it just flattens it out and you can press it, place it flat like this. This little pleat that you're putting in the gusset just gives extra room and allowance in the bag and makes a nice decorative end as well. But you've got your bag will be a little bit roomier for having this extra fabric. And then pin that pleat together and then you can remove that pin. Now tack it together all the way along the end and it will look like this. So you've just tacked the pleat into place. Now take one of your bag and uh, repeat that on the other end to pleat the other end in exactly the same way. Now take one of your bag end outers and place it right sides facing along that pleat so that the long edge 
of the bag end outer goes right sides facing along that pleated end. It will match. So if you pin one end to one side of the bag gusset and one end to the other side of the bag gusset outer and then you can pin together between. If it doesn't fit exactly, just readjust your pleat a little bit. If you haven't sewn it perfectly accurately, it might be a little bit too big or too small, but just you can undo it or add some extra pleats. But if you've done it half an inch, it will fit. Pin it together, making sure that you match up the raw edges. Now sew the two pieces together along this side. Once that's done, Open it out and press the seam allowances towards the bag end outer. Now repeat that to sew the other bag end outer to the other pleated end. And this completes the bag gusset outer. Making the gusset lining. Take the two bag gusset lining pieces and place them right sides facing, matching the raw edges. Now pin them together at the two short edges, pin them together all the way along. Now we're going to stitch them together, but we need to leave a turning gap in the center. This is what you're going to turn the whole bag right sides out through later. So the seams either side need to be just an inch long. So if you mark one inch from one side and one inch from the other side, the gap that you'll have left will be two and a half inches. So sew from the end to one side and the gap marked to the other side, making sure you reverse stitch at the end of each seam. Then press the seam open and flat and there's your turning gap left in the centre. Now you need to pleat the ends in exactly the same way as you did with the gusset outer. So fold the gusset lining in half, measure and mark a half an inch from the fold and pin it together. Open it out and then open out the fold. Again, if you put something like a small pair of scissors inside, it just helps to open it out flat. And then you can pin that little pleat into place and tack across just to hold it. And it will look like this, just like you did with the gusset outer. Then take the bag, one of the bag end linings, place that right sides facing across the top, match the edges at one end, make sure the raw edges at the top and the sides are meeting up. And it will fit nicely, as is with all the other line, bag ends, because of the little quarter of an inch mark at the end that just includes the seam. And then sew it together across the top edge. Make sure the raw edges are matching when you do this so that it fits nicely. Sew it together and then once that's done, press it so the seams are facing towards the bag end lining. Then repeat that to pleat the other end and sew the other bag end lining to the other end in the same way. Assembling the bag outer. Now take the bag, bag, uh, bag gusset outer that you've just pleated, fold it in half matching the edges because we need to find the center of the long edge so if you just match the seams where you've joined the bag end outers on please press it with your fingers just to create a crease and then if you just mark the top and the bottom because you'll need both of these center marks just on the wrong side now take the bag front outer and move the lining out of the way because we're only going to sew into the outer, not the lining. So fold it out of the way. Now you mark the center earlier when you're attaching the zip. If you haven't, you'll have to mark it now by folding it in half. Just pop a pin in there to mark it. Place the gusset outer and the front outer right sides facing and match up those center marks and pin together. Make sure the raw edges are matching as well. Now match up the seams that are joining the bag end outers into place. So the seam where the bag end outer joins the front outer and where it joins the gusset outer. So just make sure those seams are matching nicely. Roll one on top of the other. This will be visible from the outside. So if they're matching, it'll look neater. And place a pin diagonally to hold that seam together. And then pin it, the two outers together. Make sure the bag end linings are out of the way. You only want to be sewing through outer fabric. So just fold it all out of the way. When you're sewing it together as well, keep checking 
on your sewing machine that the lining of the outer and the bag ends are all out of the way. We only want to be sewing into outer fabric. Now pin it together between that centre mark and the ends all the way around the edge matching raw edges. The length of the gusset has been calculated so it will fit round this curve. When you pin it all the way along, if you get to the end and one piece feels a bit bigger than the other, then just go back and add and re-pin it and just ease it. If you ease one round gradually, it will fit. So you can see here, I just need to move that pin slightly and then I can ease the curved edge because I have measured it so it fits, but you may find that you just need to repin to ease it back in. Now at the other side, match up the bag end outers there. Make sure the seam matches up exactly by rolling one on top of the other, or you can push a pin through the two seams to make sure they match, and then pin together across to make sure that that's held together and those, those seams stay matching up when you sew them together. And then pin the ends of the bag end outers up to the top. Again, make sure the lining is folded out of the way. And then pin it together between those end pins and the centre pin. Again, easing the fabric so that it goes in. You don't need to pleat or gather it, but it will fit. But you just might need to move a few pins and e ease it back in. You can pull the fabric very slightly to get it to curve around the corner, but don't do it too much or you'll end up with little gathers. Make sure the raw edges are matching. And put plenty of pins in, because when you're sewing, it's much easier to keep the raw edges matching if you've put enough pins in. Making sure the lining is well out of the way. Sew together all the way around, starting at one end of the bag end outer and finishing at the other end of the bag end outer. And it will look like this. It's sewn together all the way around, but not across the top of the end outers, just up the sides. And you can see now, look, I've got those seams matching up nicely. Now you know, need to sew the other side of the gusset to the bag back outer. Again, fold the lining out of the way. Put a pin where you match that centre mark on the bag back outer, just so you can see it from the front. And take the centre mark that you marked marked on the other side of the bag gusset out and match up the centres and pin together. So we're going to pin this together and sew it in exactly the same way as we did with the other side. So start by matching up the seams of the bag end outers, rolling one across the, on top of the other. Make sure the seam allowances of those are facing towards the end of the bag end outers. Pin together up the side. Again, we're going to leave the top ends of the bag end outers unstitched at this point. You're just sewing along the sides. And then pin together between the centre and the ends. And then pin at the other end. Matching up the seams. And then pin up the other side. And then pin between them in exactly the same way as you did with the other side. And then sew it all together. And then it will look like this. So now you've attached the bag gusset outer to so the bag front outer and the bag back outer. And that section is now finished. Attaching the bag tabs. Take one bag tab, remove the label and fold it in half lengthways with right sides facing, making sure the raw edges match up and pin it together. Now sew together just down the long side. Now it look, will look like this. Press the seam open and flat and then turn it right sides out. It's only a short tube so it's quite easy but I'm going to use my turning tube. I don't even need to tack the ends for this. Just poke it in and if you don't have a turning tube just turn it carefully right sides out. Push it all the way out and make sure the whole of the bag tab is turned right sides out. Now press it so that the seam runs down the centre of the back. Give it a nice press and then top stitch down both long edges. This holds it flat and also gives it a neater finish. And it will look like this. 
Now take one of your oval rings and thread the bag tab through it. Make sure the seam is on the inside and also move the ring round so that the join of the ring is on the inside as well, just because that's an, a nicer finish. Make sure the short ends are matching up and pin them together and then tack together within the seam allowance across this end. And then it will look like this and your ring is attached. Repeat that to make the other bag tab and attach it to the other oval ring in the same way. Now take one of the bag tabs and measure and mark a half an inch in and down from the raw edges. This is a placement mark, so just put it in with an erasable pen, half an inch down. You can use a ruler or a tape measure for this, but just make sure that you draw or mark a line a half inch down from the raw edges. Makes placing it much easier if you've got a line to follow. Now take the bag that you've assembled so far. And remember we left the ends of the bag end outers unstitched. So take the tab and poke it up through the bag end outers that we joined the gusset to. And pull it through that end. Now that mark you made, that half an inch mark, that night needs to be level with the raw edges. Marking it in advance makes it a lot easier. Basically the bag tab needs to stick up half an inch above the bag end outer but putting that mark on makes it easier pin it into place and then sew it into place all the way along and then it will look like this so the bag tab is now securely attached inside the bag end outer then repeat that to pin and sew the other bag end outer on the other side of the bag and now your rings and your bag end outers are all attached assembling the bag lining the bag lining is attached to the bag gusset lining in exactly the same way as you did with the outer. So you don't need to mark the centre on the bag gusset lining because that's where the seam is. You already mark the centre on the bag lining front and back. Just pop a pin in there so you can see it. Make sure the outer is out of the way and then place the centre seam of the bag gusset lining so it meets up with that centre mark on the bag gusset front, on the bag lining front. Now pin it together at the ends, just like you did before. So where the bag end linings are, make sure those seams match up by rolling one on top of the other. This is exactly the same way as you did the outer fabrics. So pin it together, matching up the ends of the bag end linings. And then pin it together all the way along the edge so that the raw edge of the bag gusset lining is meeting up exactly with the bag front lining. Again, you may need to ease this into place by moving the pins, but it will fit. So pin it into place all the way along. I'm just pasting a few pins here to show you. When you do yours, put more pins in, it will be more stable. Again, before you pin between, go to the end and match up the seams of the bag end linings by rolling one on top of the other pin them together diagonally and then pin the ends of the bag end linings but just up the sloped end not across the top and then pin between Then once you've pinned it in place, sew it together, starting at one side of the bag end lining, working all the way to the other of the bag end lining, all the way round. Once that's done, it will look like this. So that's one side of the gusset lining sewn in place. We're now going to sew the other side of the gusset lining to the bag back lining. Again, mark the centre that you marked on the back bag back lining. I always put a pin in here just so I can see it from the front and then I can match it up to the centre seam on the bag gusset lining. Pin together at this point and then just like before, match up those seams on the bag end linings and pin them together. And then pin along the end of the bag end lining. And then pin across the ends. So this time we're actually going to sew the end of the bag end lining because we don't need this anymore and it can be sewn closed. 
with the bag outer, that's where we put the bag ends with the oval rings. But with the lining, obviously nothing will be going in there. So at this stage, you can sew it closed. These ends will be hidden inside the bag end outers, but I just think it makes it neater if they're sewn closed and it sits inside the gusset outers better later. You'll see that when we get to that stage. So again, with this one, match up the side edges and pin together across the top. Make sure you don't pin also into any of the outer fabric. The way that I've designed this bag is so that there are no raw edges showing, there are no bound edges. There's only that one turning gap, which will be slip stitch closed later, but it makes a much neater finish to make it this way. So sew it across all the way around the edge, back up to the top and then across the top to finish. And once that's done, it will look like that. And the lining is all now attached. The gusset is attached to the lining. Now, I like to attach my linings to the outers because it helps to keep the lining inside, but also makes the bag more structured. So what you need to do now on one side, pin the lining and the outer together. They're both the same size, same size and shape. So you're just pinning it together, matching the raw edges, make sure the seams of the bag end outers match up. And all of those raw edges where the gusset outer is attached to the front outer and the gusset lining is attached to the front lining, pin them all together. Do keep checking as you're going that, that both the lining and the outer are lying nice and flat. So I just check on the front and the back all the time. They need to be laying flat when you pin them together. Otherwise, you don't want any of the lining coming up or the outer coming up. So just push them down every now and then just to make sure that you don't catch any of that in this seam. This seam won't be seen at all. It's worked within the seam allowance, but it's just the way of holding the lining inside the outer. It's a step that you don't have to do, but you will find you'll get a neater finish and the bag does look more structured when the lining is sewn in. But it's neater than having a bound lining. It gives you a smoother finish on the inside of your bag. So make sure you match up all the seams. And it's really important that the raw edges are matching because we're going to sew this together, but within the seam allowance. So this seam won't be seen at all, but won't interfere with the bag construction. Now sew it together all the way around from one side to the other, but within the seam allowance. So just an eighth of an inch from the raw edge. So if you see here, you can see two lines of stitching. One is the first seam and the second one is just a tacking stitch. If you prefer, you could tack this in by hand, but if you work within the seam allowance, it won't be seen. Now you need to do exactly the same on the other side. So pin together the other bag outers, end outers. Make sure the seams match up. It's a little bit more fiddly on this side because you need to roll it up a bit like a sausage roll. So I find it easier if you match up the centres because you've already marked them, that's quite easy. So there's the centre mark. And then take the centre mark of the, that you've got, well, you can use the seam of the gusset lining and match those. Because you've got to roll the bag up in between here, it's just a little bit more fiddly. But you've as long as you pin it together slowly and carefully, one step at a time, it's fairly easy to do. The only thing that you need to remember is to stitch in within the seam allowance and also make sure you constantly push those fabrics to the inside because you don't want any of them coming up and getting caught in this seam. So just take this stage slowly and carefully. But you'll find when you're making bags in the future, if you can attach the lining to the outer within a seam like this, then you will get a more structured bag. And it does avoid that bound raw edge inside a bag, which can sometimes look a bit messy. And then just pin it together. But if you work round it one little bit at a time, then you're pushing everything on the inside. Again, always match up the seams. When you're sewing anything to mat together, if you match up the anchor points, like the ends of fabric or seams or centre points, it's easier than to pin together. So match up the bag end outer seams and then you can pin it together between. You'll, again, you'll have to work around it by folding it in. I found if I rolled it all in, then pushed it in and then just double checked it wasn't poking up through this seam. But because this seam is sewn this holding seam is sewn right on the edge of the fabric. You're unlikely to catch the extra pieces of the bag in it. 
but it will all fit together because all of these pieces are exactly the same size. So now you've pinned it together all the way along. You can sew it together all the, all the way along, just like you did with the other side. But this time you can sew across the ends as well of the bag end outers. So if you see, I've finished it now. It looks a bit like a sausage roll or a croissant. And I've also sewn across the ends of these. But, but again, always inside the seam allowance. And that's it. That section is now finished. Finishing the bag. Now you've sewn the whole bag together, you can turn it right sides out through that turning gap that's in the centre of the bag gusset lining. Put your fingers inside the gap all the way to the end and grab hold of one side of the bag and pull it gently out through the gap. It will all turn out through that turning gap, but just do it gently, otherwise you may break the seams in the turning gap. So just do it gently. When you've pulled out one side, then put your fingers inside the gap, grab hold of the very end... Just grab hold of some fabric at the end and pull that through the gap. Again, just do it slowly and carefully. Just to ease it out gently. The gap is big enough, but you can't do it too fast. Otherwise, it's hard because there's a lot of bulk. You've got all the lining and the outers and the rings and the zip. So just do it slowly. And then once you've pulled it all out through the gap, you can remove any labels that you've left because you won't need those anymore. And suddenly your whole sling bag is revealed because you've been working with it inside out for so long. Pull out those rings so the oval rings were now sitting neatly above. Do that on both sides. Just get hold of the rings and give them a little tug. They're all sewn in very securely so that that will be fine. Once you're happy that all the corners and edges are pushed out and all the rings are out, Make sure that everything is okay and that you haven't caught anything in the seams. Once you're happy that everything is neat, you can then sew the turning gap closed. So turn it wrong sides out again. Take the turning gap. You might need to press the ends under again after you've pulled everything out through it. Sometimes it distorts it a bit. And then pin those turned under edges together. Now you can either top stitch this turning gap closed by machine or you can slip stitch it by hand, depending on what effect you like. With a little gap like this, and because I want the inside of my bag to be nice and flat, I'm going to slip stitch it close by hand using a matching thread. But you can sew it by machine, it's entirely up to you. So there's my gap, nice and flat and slip stitch closed. So that is the only turning gap in the whole bag. All the other raw ends are enclosed. Now take the edges and get... Take a little bit of time here to roll those seams between your fingers so they lay flat and give them a good press. It gives the structure back to your bag because it's been turned around so much and sewn. And also press across those ends. Now push the lining ends right up inside. And now we're going to secure this. So push a pin through the seam that joins the bag end out on one side. Make sure it comes out on the other side because you want those seams to lay exactly on top of each other. We're going to sew these bag ends which gives a much neater finish and holds everything in the end so make sure those seams are matching by pushing the pin through when you're happy with that then pin them together it's important those seams match up so pin it all together there's a lot of layers here but if you stitch slowly and carefully you will get through it so now top stitch inside the edge all the way around and that holds those ends into place and gives you a nice neat finish. And then repeat that to top stitch all around the inside of the other end. And now your bag is finished and you've only got the strap left to make. Attaching the bag strap. Take the bag strap fabric piece and you can remove the label. And take one of the short ends and fold it over by a quarter of an inch to the wrong side. To get this accurate, if you measure half an inch inwards from the short raw edge and mark this with a pen, then fold the short edge over to meet up with these marks and you will have an exact quarter of an inch turnover. 
it doesn't, this one doesn't have to be exact, but if you want it to be exact, then that's a good way to do it. Repeat that to fold the other short end over by a quarter of an inch. Now fold the whole bag strap in half lengthways with right sides facing, making sure those turned under edges mate up and making sure they stay turned under. So I'm just going to pin through both of them so that one doesn't come unturned. Now pin the raw edges together all the way along. So pin it together, you can fold, you could press it if you like, if you find that easier before you pin it together. Once you get to about halfway, pin the other raw ends together, just because this helps it to come even. If you work from one end to the other, sometimes you find that the other end doesn't match up exactly. So if you work to the centre and then from the end to the centre, it's much more even. Make sure those turned under ends stay pinned under. And pin together all the way along. You don't need lots of pins, it's just to make sure that the raw edges stay matched up. But again, you could press this if you prefer. Now sew together only down the long edge, all the way along the long edge to the other end, leaving those short turned under ends open. Once you've done that, it will look like that. Press the seam flat, down, lying down the centre. I've tacked the end together because I'm going to use my turning tube to turn it right sides out. It's quite a long strap, so without a turning tube, it may take you some time. But you can do it, it's quite a wide strap. If you're going to use a turning tube, thread the plastic tube all the way to the end and then take the wooden stick, push that in and then push the stick up through, moving all the gathered bit pleats to the end until the whole strap is turned right sides out. It's quite a long strap, so it'll take you a little bit of time, but just work slowly and carefully and then the whole strap will look like this. Now press it so that the seam runs down the centre of the back, not on the edge, but at the centre of the back, and then top stitch down both short ed both long edges, so it looks like this. You can leave the short ends unstitched, because they'll be stitched across in a moment. Now, to attach it, take one end of the strap and thread it through one of the oval rings from the outside to the inside. And it needs to overlap by about an inch doesn't need to be exact I'm just measuring here to show you but about an inch you don't want it too much longer it needs to be long enough so that you can sew it but not too long so it creates too much bulk an inch is about right make sure that the side edges match up and then pin it together now to secure it sew it into place with a rectangle all the way around and it will look like this and that's one end attached now making sure the strap isn't twisted thread the other short end up through one side of the slide buckle and down through the other over the central bar. Again, making sure it isn't twisted, thread this short end of the strap through the other oval ring on the, from the outside to the inside, just like this. Now pull the bag strap that's going through the slide buckle upwards so it forms a loop, it just keeps it out of the way. Take that short end of the bag strap and push it up through one side of the central bar, up over it and back down again. So it's going from the back to the front. And then making sure this end is about an inch overlap from that central, from the buckle, about, about an inch. Pin it into place. So that you're actually sewing this to the central buckle and then sew it together in a rectangle so it's looped around the center of the slide buckle and now the whole strap is finished and it's now fully adjustable so you can make it really short if you want to just have it over your shoulder you can have it longer if you want it as a crossbody it's entirely up to you but your sling bag is now finished it's very roomy inside it's got that extra slip pocket zip it up sling it over your shoulder and you're ready to go. Making the curvy purse, we'll start by inserting the zip on the front. Place the purse front outer right side up and then make a mark three quarter of an inch to the right of the left hand side, just like this, 
using an erasable pen or a pin. Take your shorter zip and place it right sides down on top so the teeth are down on the right side. Now fold the edge of the zip tape upwards at an angle like that, so it makes a little triangle, and pin it into place. Now the little metal end or the plastic end you have on your zip, place that on that three quarter of an inch you've just made, mark you've just made, and make sure that the edge of the zip tape matches up with the raw edge of the fabric and pin it into place. And then pin it into place all the way along the top edge. And then you just need to, keeping that fold upwards, take the pin out and then put it in so it's just attaching the zip tape. So the end is at the three quarter of inch mark. Now on the right hand side, measure mark one inch inwards from the right hand side onto the zip. You can mark this using pen or a pin. Now tack the zip into place within the seam allowance, but stop at that one inch mark. It will look like this now. So you can see I stopped tacking at the one inch mark. Take the purse front lining and place this right sides down on top, making sure the raw and the side edges all match up. So the zip is sandwiched between the outer and the lining and the outer and the lining of right sides facing. And pin it together all the way along the top edge. Just adjust it to make sure that everything, all the raw edges are matching. Now you need to make another couple of marks. Mark one, mark one inch in from the edge and then another one three quarters of an inch in. So there's a quarter of an inch between them. That's the gap where the zip will come through. Now sew it together, stopping at the first mark using a normal quarter inch seam allowance and a zip foot. Pull the zip downwards and out of the way and then pin the outer and the lining back together again. So pin it together across the end, making sure that you're not pinning into the zip tape because the zip tape needs to be out of the way. Now start stitching at that second mark and stitch to the end, reverse stitching at the ends of the seams. Now you can see you've got a gap of quarter of an inch left in stitch, unstitched and that's where the zip comes out of. So that you can have an open top zip and it will open fully but the zip isn't caught because that little quarter of an inch leaves it. And now that's that section finished. Inserting the zip on the back. Now this time take the purse back lining and place it right sides up. Measure three quarters of an inch in from the left side, just like you did before, but on the lining this time. Now take the zip, and the zip needs to place right sides up this time. Fold the edge, the end of the zip tape, but fold it so it's underneath this time. So the opposite way to when you did it on the front. It needs to be underneath like this, just fold it under like a triangle. Now the edge of the metal ends or the plastic ends on the zip need to sit on that mark, but actually, if you make sure that the edges of the front outer lining match up with that back lining, that's about the right place. And making sure the tape meets up with the top raw edge of the back lining, pin it into place, pin it into the place all the way along. So it's actually sewn into place exactly the same way as you did with the front, you're just reversing the fabrics. So again, once you've done that, you can then remove that pin and put it back in, make sure that zip is folded underneath. Measure one inch in from the right hand side and mark the zip and this is where you'll stop stitching and then tack the zip into place across the top and finishing at that one inch mark and then it will look like this you can see it's all tacked into place take the back outer and place that right sides facing on top matching up the top and the side edges of the back outer with the back lining and the zip will be sandwiched between make sure the side edges and the raw edges match up and then pin it between. By sewing them together in the opposite way like that, it's a much easier way to insert this zip. Now take your tape measure and mark, measure and mark like you did before, one inch in from the right hand side and then three quarters of an inch. So you're leaving a three, a quarter of an inch gap between. Sew together all the way along, stopping at the first mark and reverse stitching. Pull the zip downwards and out of the way Pin together the raw side edge and making sure you don't catch the zip tape in your stitching, start at the second mark and stitch to the end, reverse stitching at either end of the seam. Now if you open it all up, 
you can see that the zip is now inserted neatly between the front and the back. Press these seams at this stage so to make sure that the seam is laying right on the edge. You're not going to top stitch you like you would do with a normal zip, that's done a little bit later, but if you press them at this stage it's neater. Assembling the purse. Open up the zip halfway, just so that you can open up when you've finished it. So just leave the slider in the centre. Now open it all out so that the outer fabrics are right sides facing and the lining fabrics are right sides facing. Match up the seams that join the outers to the linings. If you make sure one seam allowance goes one way and one the other, they nest together better and the seams will lay flat and there'll be less bulk. So you can see they're facing in opposite directions. Go around to the other side, just tuck the zip in and do the same, but make sure the seams are facing the same direction on, on each side. So you've got that top seam that's facing downwards and then the bottom seam's facing upwards. It just gives you a neater finish. Now keep that zip tucked inside. It's quite a little purse, so the zip will quite want it to bounce out, but just push it inside and pin the outer fabrics together. They're exactly the same size and shape, so the raw edges will meet up neatly, so make sure they do, so you get that nice curved shape. The purse has been designed into a curved shape, so it sits neatly inside your sling bag as well and matches the shape. So just pin it together around the side, long side edges and around the curved edges and then pin the lining together. Make sure, again, I'm just moving it slightly so that the raw edges are matching. And again, match up the curves and the sides. If you, once you've pinned it together at those seams joining, that's all anchored, so it's much easier to get everything to match up at this stage when you're pin, pinning the outers and the linings together. Now you need to leave a turning gap in this lining for turning the purse in right sides out. So just measure and mark the centre of that bottom edge and then mark an inch either side of it and that will leave a two inch turning gap. Make marks there so you don't forget to leave it unstitched. Now stitch together starting at one side of the mark all the way round and then the other mark on the other side and then it will look like this fold one seam allowance over to one side and give it a press and then fold the turning gap over on both sides and that section's now finished finishing the purse you can now turn the purse right sides out by pushing your fingers inside the turning gap grabbing hold of the bottom end of the lining and pushing it all the way out through the turning gap do it slowly and gently to ease it through, otherwise you might split the stitches on your turning gap. But the turning gap is big enough to be able to do go all the way through. Push out the corners of the outer just with your fingers. You can now undo the zip fully. So make sure all the corners are turned out, just so that you've got, because you've got those curved edges, if you use something like a blunt tool like this, I'm using the stick for my turning tool, or just something blunt, to just push out those curves so they lay nice and neatly. And then do the same with the lining, because you need this bottom seam to be flat now so that we can sew it closed. So just push out those curves, fold the edges of the turning gap back under, because you pressed them earlier, but turn them back under and pin them into place so that they, the turned under edge matches up exactly. Just snip off any um, raw fraying edges that you've got and then stitch this gap closed by hand or you can do it by machine if you prefer. Once that's done, push the lining right inside and make sure that the curved corners of the lining are sitting inside the curved corners of the outer. Now fold, refold this to make sure that the seam is lying on the edge and then top stitch all the way round and it will look like this. So the purse section is now finished. The zip opens way beyond the edge so it can open flat, open nice and open, but we're going to put a tab on in the next step. Adding the zip tab. Close the zip fully so the slider is right at the end and then measure two inches from the side seam of the purse along the zip tape just make a little mark because we're going to trim it at this point. So the edge of the zip tape needs to extend two inches to the right of the side seam of the bag. So trim it across this mark and it will all be safe. It won't come undone because you've put the slider at the other end. So just trim it across there. 
Now you can work a few stitches to secure the end of the zip. It's not necessary, but if you want to, you can. Now take the zip tab and turn one long edge over by a quarter of an inch to the wrong side. So to do this exactly, if you measure half an inch, so this is the top raw edge. If you measure half an inch in, and then fold the top raw edge, long raw edge over, to meet that half an inch mark, that means you've turned it over exactly by a quarter of an inch. Give that a good press to hold it in place. You can just do it with your fingers. Now fold the zip tab in half, like this, so that the raw edges meet, and those turned under edges stay turned under, so just pin them together to make sure they stay turned under. And then pop another pin at the other side. Now stitch it together just along this one side making sure you sew on top of the turned under edges they stay turned under. Now press that seam open and then press the whole tab so that seam is running down the centre and then pin it together across this end so it looks like this and sew together across that short end. And then it will look like this now, like a little pocket. Just trim off the corners. This just reduces bulk when you turn it right sides out in a moment. And I also like to trim a little bit off that turned under edge just again, it helps it to stay inside. Now turn this little tab right sides out. You can just do this with your fingers because it's quite little. I tend to try and turn it in, out mostly, roll it around a bit and that helps to do it. And then if you get a blunt tool like this stick, just push out the corners. If you just turn it around a bit and then you can use the more pointed end to just push them out but just be careful you don't split the stitches or the or the fabric and then roll that seam so it's laying right on the edge you may need to turn those turned under edges back underneath again that's easy enough to do because you pressed them early earlier and now you've made a nice little pocket that the end of your zip is going to sit into give it a press just to flatten it and all hold it all together now take the end of your zip and place it inside the pocket so that the top of the pocket, the one without the seam, is on the right side of the zip and the one with the seam is on the wrong side of the zip. Pin it into place. Make sure the end of the zip is right inside the pocket. If you give it a little tap, that helps. And then pin it into place. And then to hold the pocket onto the end of the zip, top stitch all the way around in a rectangle. And it will look like this. And that's the zip carefully enclosed. Now it's finished the purse will open completely so you can get lots inside and easily find it now to complete your set take your little curvy pouch pop it inside your sling bag it matches the curved shape means it will sit inside nicely you'll be able to find things easily and you're all ready to go